and I hope that you enjoy participating in today's service. I need to make an important announcement at the very beginning, which is that Bobby Deerbeck, our volunteer coordinator, went to the ER a couple days ago and wound up staying and has a very serious illness. And so uh, Tom said that we should just report to you that she's in the hospital, but she's going to need your prayers. You can send cards, you can send cards to our church and we'll make sure she gets them. She can't have visitors, of course, because of COVID, except for Tom. So you'll hear more details, but he wants me to announce just what I announced today uh, in the service. You're going to say, what can I do to help Bobby? She, she gave me this sign-up sheet for lawnmowers right before, right before going to the hospital. So if you'd like to help Bobby fill out this sign-up, there's a, there's a sheet out in the narthex, and you can take a slot, and it'll make her life happy. Uh, so, and also, if you want to play softball, on Tuesday, starting uh, Tuesday, May 11th, you can indicate your interest in, on the participation card that you put in every week in the offering plate. And we'll give that, give that information to John Wick. Now I need to welcome Claire Sedlachek, who many of you have not met in person until today. And she is assisting in the service today at 9 and also at 10.30. And then following the 10.30 service, we will meet and take a vote on whether we think God is calling her to be the pastor of our church through the power of the Holy Spirit. She is praying the same uh, concern to God in these days. And so I encourage you to come back at 1130 if you're a member of the church and help us make uh, that decision. Is that right? Okay. Our opening hymn, 377, 135, let us stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is alive. He is risen. Christ is alive. Let us proclaim the good news to all the earth. Love and salvation have triumphed over death. Neither sin nor death shall ever separate us from the love of Christ. O death, where is your sting? Our eyes are open. Our hearts are renewed. Our faith is living. Our souls sanctified. May the church sing forth its gladness. We rejoice in Christ and in his resurrection. Alleluia. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear Just before he departs from the disciples at his death, he says, I'm the vine, you are the branches, in that very famous line. Claire, please. Our reading this morning is from Acts chapter 8. And the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. 
Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life was taken away, is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more. He went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise for the Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to John, 15th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace, Grace to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> I hate it when I feel clueless, and I feel clueless a lot of the time. There was a category on Jeopardy Friday night called Languages. And here's one of the questions for $800. Some scholars trace the origin of the word Andes to a word meaning high crest in this indigenous language. All three click their clicker. And the person who clicked in first, the woman on the left in the white and black sweater, she said this, what is Quechua right? What? <laughs> who knows Quechua? I feel so clueless that I couldn't come up with that. My granddaughter is always on her phone. I asked her a couple months ago, why are you always on your phone? It's TikTok. I don't know talk, tip from TikTok. I feel clueless. My wife and I were driving Friday night through Chicago. We always listen to WBBM for the traffic on the eights, traffic and weather on the eights. <clears throat> as we were listening to see what route we take. I stopped after I heard the traffic report and I turned to Kathy and said, you know, I have to confess, I've been listening to this hundreds of times and I never know what it means. I don't know where the circle interchange is. I don't know where the split is. I don't know where the Stevenson is. All I listen, you understand where I'm coming from? I'm totally clueless. So I'm sympathetic with the central character in that story from Acts. 
I'm sympathetic with the Ethiopian eunuch. He served in the court of Queen Candace. Now, Ethiopia was interesting because it was a matriarchal hierarchy in rulers, all women queens, no kings. Well, the Ethiopian eunuch was in charge of her treasury. Why him? Because a eunuch would not have any romantic affairs, couldn't get involved in a palace romantic intrigue, and could be trusted with the money, even fixed. So what you phrase would you use to describe him? You'd use a phrase he was reading in Isaiah, cut off. Cut off from family relations, cut off from a possibility of a full life, cut off also from the community of faith, because listen to what it says in Deuteronomy. The book of the law says clearly, no one who is a eunuch shall be admitted to the assembly. Israel's survival was based in large part on the family. Be fruitful and, exactly, honor thy father and, we got it, do not covet your neighbor's spouse. But this eunuch, this sexless person, would never have a family. He would never be in any family. So now, he's just been to Jerusalem on some sort of pilgrimage. And what did he hear? He heard these words in Jerusalem. Don't let him in the assembly. He wasn't allowed in. But the Holy Spirit, by the way, the book of Acts has often been called the gospel of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, in the form of an angel, had other plans. The angel led the disciple, the apostle Philip, to the desert Gaza Road. The Holy Spirit led Philip to the eunuch's chariot. And what is the, chariot, the eunuch reading? He's reading from Isaiah, which is Jesus' favorite prophet. He refers to Isaiah over and over. And Philip says to the eunuch, do you understand what you're reading from Isaiah? Are you clueless? And the eunuch says, of course I'm clueless. I'm not allowed in. I've never been to a Bible study. I've never heard a sermon. I want to know the meaning of this phrase from Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. He was cut off from the land of the living with no posterity and no future. Who is this, he asked. The clueless eunuch said, tell me more. Who is this who was led like a sheep to the slaughter? Who is this who says nothing before those who mutilate him, like a lamb before his shearer, who does not protest? Who is this? Well, this is Philip's golden opportunity. Why, this is about Jesus. Not somebody back in Isaiah's time, but about Jesus who just died and rose again. And the best part, this Jesus was cut off from the land of the living and came to include clueless outsiders. That's the best part. He came to include clueless outsiders. Let's keep reading in Isaiah. The days will surely come when the foreigner will no longer say, the Lord separates me from God's people. The days will surely come when the eunuch will no longer say, I'm just a dry stick, a dry tree. Further in Isaiah, he reads, the days will surely come when the eunuch who loves me and my covenant will have a name better than my sons and daughters. He will be a monument to be remembered forever. The eunuch, who doesn't even have a name in the story, asks, and all of this is because of the Jesus you're talking about? It's life-changing for the eunuch. So he asks, well, what's to prevent me from being baptized? And Philip does not tell him to memorize Luther's meaning of the small catechism on baptism. He, he says, well, nothing prevent you from being baptized. So they stop the chariot, and down to the river they go, and do cannonballs. One cannonball in the name of the Father, another cannonball in the name of the Son, another cannonball in the name of the Holy Spirit. Suddenly the eunuch, the clueless one, he gets it. He becomes one of the very first Christian converts. He became part of our family, and we are part of his family. The one who can only sing the high notes, the one who looks like a man but talks like a little boy, 
the one who can never toss down a few with the real man, the one who will never brag about his kids or grandkids on Facebook, he is one of the first convicts. It's amazing. Just amazing. And what does it mean for us? Ask yourself this question. Who are the clueless ones who need to be told about Jesus? Who are the clueless ones that need to be told about Jesus? Last Sunday, a week ago, my wife and I left church and drove to Michigan. As we were driving to Michigan, we were passed by six, I was gonna use a bad term in front of the kids, sorry. <laughs> bad blank bikers, okay? They were like the big Harleys. They had, they had the leather jackets with the Teutonic crosses on it, the skull helmets and all that kind of stuff, driving down the inter interstate on the way to the Chicago Loop. And I turned to my wife and I said, I wonder which service they went to this morning. <laughs> but their cluelessness represents the cluelessness of 54% of the people in American culture, according to Pew Research two months ago. Americans who think worship is not important. And they are clueless, half of our culture, about what we do here, why we gather here, what we believe, about what we care about so deeply, about Jesus' love for all people, about God's gracious claim on their lives and what it could mean for them. Who is the Spirit leading us to let in? Who are the people that we might be afraid would say yes if we invited them? Who do we need to invite? I can't get a comment out of my head that's been rolling around in there for a couple of weeks now. I asked my daughter, my granddaughter, when she came for our weekly late Sunday afternoon family get-together at our house, I asked her about a friend of hers, a guy I had met a few times who visited our house, shared a meal with us. He actually, a couple months ago, asked me if I would talk to him about some personal issues, and we did that up in my study. But I haven't seen the guy for a little while. So I asked my granddaughter how he was doing. Was he staying away from us for some reason? And then here's what my granddaughter said. The sentence I want to talk about is coming up. The sentence that runs through my head. My granddaughter said, oh, he's fine. I just don't see him much anymore, but he likes you. I heard him talking on the phone the other day to a friend. He said this, and here's the sentence. Oh, they're cool. They even sit down together and pass food around the table, like they do in the movies. He'd never experienced that, and he's in his mid-twenties. Like they do in the movies. It broke my heart to hear the phrase, and I can't get it out of my head. He never had a family life. His mother died in childbirth, giving birth to him. He does not know who his dad was. He was shunted around from aunt to aunt, never part of a Christmas party, never got Christmas presents until we gave him one. He drives a rusted out van that's unregistered with no plates, gets jobs from restaurant to restaurant. And the good news of Jesus' love for him is going to have to take some concrete form for him to know and understand this one who was cut off from the land of the living. This one who himself feels cut off from our culture. That he might understand the resurrection life and what it means for him and people he hangs out with. We have a large task. Reaching out to those who need to experience and know a new life in Christ. If passing food around the table is something out of the movies for this kid, what do you think eating around an altar in a strange sanctuary is going to feel like to him? We're going to have to get creative in our religionless mission field that surrounds us right here in this state. The angel of the Lord led Philip to go down to Gaza and take a seat in the Ethiopian's chariot. Whose chariot is the Holy Spirit inviting us to sit in? 
Which Harley did we ride alongside of? Which rusty van without any plates? Or on the other hand, which Lexus RX350, whose passengers never think of stopping at church on a Sunday morning? I can tell you how one person shared the ride. Last year, right at this time, a woman named Catherine Hamlin died at age 96. She gave her whole life to embodying the gospel to people who had no chance to think of anything but survival. In her mid-30s as an OBGYN, she moved from Australia to what country? Of all countries, Ethiopia, where she found that young women were being mutilated in childbirth, suffering from obstetric fistulas, a hideous condition rarely seen for the last 100 years in the United States, though I have a friend in Michigan who does work on the issue. But these obstetric fistulas are common in Ethiopia where poverty ridden, ridden women are so small in their physical development that they can't handle the birth of their babies. The babies are too big for the women. So with no doctors around, after three or four days of labor, they have a stillbirth and wind up with openings where things should be intact. You can guess the result. Order. Abandonment by their husbands, estrangement from other villagers. One woman sat alone in the hut for nine years. People were clueless about how to handle it. But out of a faith commitment, a commitment to helping people who were cut off, Catherine Hamlin worked into her mid-90s. And fellow Peace Corps workers former Peace Corps workers, I should say, returned to Ethiopia and they helped her run this mission that she developed to help women in this condition return to society, letting them back in so they weren't cut off. 60 years ago, Catherine Hamlin and her husband moved from Australia to Ethiopia. And now her son says this, my mom had one son and she saved $45,000. The New York Times columnist Nicholas Kristof says that she is the contemporary Mother Teresa of our time. Why? Why? Because she knew a life worth living is the one where God's will and God's way becomes most important. Because she knew how to bring people in who were formerly abandoned and without direction. To whom, I ask again, do we need to give the message? We can do it in dramatic or subtle ways. A single woman once told me, since our pastors have taken to talking about children and family so much in our church, it's making me, without a partner, feel even more on the outside in church. She's been echoing the thought, the woman who told me this, she's been echoing the thought of many singles who wonder about entering church alone. They've seen building additions called family life centers at churches who ignore the fact that in most churches, one third of all members are single, widowed, divorced, never married. Who do we need to include? Who is the spirit calling us to invite? People with a criminal record who struggle to get their feet on the ground and walk the straight and narrow and who wonder, am I cut off? People recovering from addictions who feel like they've been hiding and are getting tired of hiding. People who wonder, why do I get more of a welcome at AA meetings and, or at Narcotics Anonymous than I do at church in a fellowship of believers? Do we need to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to people who are ill and don't feel like they're like everybody else right now? or to people who don't have the same orientation we have, or the same race or language or background of the majority. The angel of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, wants nothing more than for you and me to get in the chariot with those who are cut off. The eunuch couldn't wait to be baptized and become part of the biggest family in the world. We welcome you into the Lord's table. As a baptized person, we receive you into the fellowship of Christ part of the same body we are part of. The story begins in the desert, 
and ends with baptism cannonballs. The eunuch goes on his way rejoicing, dripping wet, no longer a dry tree, no longer cut off. We know there are many around us who would rejoice to dump, jump into the deep end, rejoicing that there is good, good news. Good news larger than anything we would ever imagine. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church, and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Lord, in your mercy. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Lord, in your mercy. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Lord, in your mercy. You have loved us so that we can love others. We know, we know that you do not need to be reminded of our needs, but we need to be reminded of our relationships with others. And our prayers in all times and in all places accomplishes that. So we pray for all in need of your love. Those who are lowly, poor, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all including Bobby Deerbeck, Paul Lee, Betty Till, Art Betcher, Janet Kloss, Sherry Schneider, Larry Sheets, Frank Talon, Richard Mertz, Brenda, Andy, Leo, Chet, Christine, Greta, Dave, and Susan. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we are so thankful for the, all of the healthcare workers who are doing great work, especially in this time of pandemic. We pray for those who have died from COVID, but we also lift up those who are still struggling from its effects. We thank you for those who care for the sick. We thank you that we are able to gather in your name and lift these prayers to you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting your never ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of love, you called us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself 
to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray as our Savior Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to his table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. You may be seated for the distribution and the distribution of Jesus Christ, which you have now received. Strengthen and preserve you unto life everlasting. Amen. Wellspring of joy through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. 